my treasure? Why, it's right where I left it. It's yours if you can find it, but you'll have to search the whole world. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. And today we're taking a look at just that, the ever-detailed and expanding One Piece world. So first and foremost, we should state that the One Piece world is a globe, just like Earth. Although that's pretty much where the similarities end. The geography of the One Piece world can get a little confusing, so to help us along, we're going to go ahead and flatten that globe for now. As you'd expect in a manga about pirates, the overwhelming majority of the world is covered in sea, represented by this blue area. Although the main story of One Piece takes place in a fraction of this sea, known as the Grand Line. The Grand Line is a powerful current that circumnavigates the globe, containing hundreds of unique islands. This stretch of water is incredibly unpredictable and dangerous when it comes to weather, and due to special magnetic waves that emit from each island, regular compasses fail upon entering the waters. The commonly used method for navigating the Grand Line is via the use of a log pose, a device that records magnetic waves of one island and then points to the next island for the user to travel to. To travel to a specific island within the Grand Line, you need to possess what is known as an eternal pose of the island. Now this permanently logs an island's magnetic waves and will always point towards it as a result. Now the Grand Line plays host to four different broad types of islands, spring, summer, autumn and winter. And just a quick fun fact that I wasn't aware of before I started doing this video, in over 20 years of One Piece we have not yet travelled to a single autumn island. Hence the need for a random stock photo here. Crazy, isn't it? In any case, even though the Grand Line weather is unpredictable, these islands are able to maintain their individual climates all year round and vary rapidly from island to island. For example, it's possible to go straight from a summer island to a winter island without passing through a spring climate. Of course, there are also special case islands that don't fit into one of these four seasons in the Grand Line. For example, the island of Little Garden is a paradise where dinosaurs did not go extinct due to the island being able to maintain an extreme climate from prehistoric times. There's also Raijin Island, where lightning falls in much the same way rain does, as well as Inislobby, an island where it is always daytime. Now at this point I should mention that the Grand Line isn't just some random current in the middle of a vast ocean. It is incredibly difficult to get to, due to being surrounded on either side by stretches of water known as the Calm Belts. Now if the Grand Line is the epitome of unpredictable weather, the Calm Belts are the exact opposite. These stretches almost never experience any sort of ocean current or winds blowing, making them nearly impossible to sail through without a self-propelled vessel. And even if you do find a way to sail efficiently, the bigger issue with the Calm Belts is that they are a breeding ground for Sea Kings, extraordinarily gigantic, unique and generally savage creatures that attack whatever is within reach. Which, if you're a Sea King, is a lot of things. With that said, it has been recorded that Marines are able to travel through the Calm Belt using sea stone lining at the bottom of their ships, which can apparently mask their presence from Sea Kings. Furthermore, some people even make the Calm Belt their home. For example, Boa Hancock's island of Amazon Lily is situated in the Calm Belt. Now moving on, the Grand Line itself isn't actually a single stretch of sea. It is divided in the center by the Red Line, which is the only landmass classified as a continent in the One Piece world. It is extraordinarily tall, rises far above sea level, as well as all the way to below sea level, and makes travel between segments of the Grand Line quite difficult. Although there are parts available, which I will get to later. Not much of the Red Line has actually been explored thus far in the story. However, we do know that the Holy Land of Marichua is located at the pinnacle of the continent. And this really is the final main piece of the One Piece World puzzle. With the addition of the Red Line comes two major separations. The first is the formation of the four blue seas, known as North, East, South and West Blue. These seas function very regularly by real world standards and don't generate any particularly strange weather, nor do sea kings tend to congregate in them, although it's not unheard of. The second important separation the red line brings is cutting the grand line in half. Separately, these two entities are known as Paradise and the New World. Now the section known as Paradise is everything I detailed in my explanation of how the Grand Line functions. However, the New World is very different. This is by far the most dangerous stretch of water in the One Piece world, commonly experiencing catastrophic and apocalyptic weather conditions. 
In fact, this part of the world is so harsh that the first half of the already difficult Grand Line was given the name Paradise as a result. With that said, sailing in the New World is far from impossible. While a regular log pose won't work due to the islands constantly changing and hiding in some cases their magnetic fields, a New World log pose was invented for more consistent travel across the seas. It should also be noted that the New World is the only part of this planet not currently under control of the world government, and is in fact ruled by the Yonko, the world's four most powerful pirates locked in constant struggle with each other. So looking at this map, entering the Grand Line without crossing the Calm Belt looks fairly impossible. However, there are a few known entry points that can be used from the four blue seas. To illustrate that, we first need to point out that the Red Line itself also circumnavigates the world, and as a result, it intersects with the Grand Line twice. So the flattened globe map ends up looking a bit more like this. Now at one of those intersections is a landmark known as Reverse Mountain. From here, there is a direct path from each of the four seas into the first half of the Grand Line Paradise. Although it does require sailing uphill through a very narrow passage with incredibly rapid currents. In fact, most pirates who venture into the Grand Line perish on their way through Reverse Mountain before ever entering the sea they were seeking. For the other half of the Red Line that separates Paradise and the New World, there is no such path. The only option is to either go over the Red Line or under the Red Line. Which brings us nicely to our next illustration. Everything we've discussed so far is but one layer of the One Piece planet, but the world extends far above and far below sea level. So let's take what we've done so far and turn it into a cross section representing sea level. About 7,000 meters below sea level is an area known as the Underworld of the Sea. This part of the world is so deep that light cannot penetrate it, allowing it to become home to some rather extraordinary creatures that have either developed bioluminescence or who rely on sensors other than sight. So far, there has been no evidence of any particularly intelligent life on this level, and it seems more like an area that is required to pass through in order to reach the next layer of the world, known as the sea floor. Now this layer sits 10,000 meters below sea level and is host to a whole world of intelligent life in the form of villages and even entire islands, the most notable of which is Fishman Island, which sits directly under the red line and is commonly used as a pathway to pass from paradise into the new world. And that's pretty much as far down as we can go in the One Piece world, however we have yet to explore going up. At 7,000 meters above sea level, we have the White Sea, an area made up of sea clouds which display similar qualities to sea water, and is able to be used as such by regular ships. Some of the clouds are even tangible and able to form islands of their own. With that said, very little life exists in the White Sea, and while there are apparently many different ways to reach the White Sea, only one has been shown thus far. This method involves using the knock-up stream, a highly pressurized water stream that shoots upwards from the Blue Sea into the White Sea. But the White Sea isn't the end of it. Above the White Sea is the infinitely more interesting White White Sea, which exists 10,000 meters above sea level. On this layer we have fully formed and inhabited sky islands, the most prominent example of which is the large Skypea, although others have also been seen including the island of Weatheria and the unknown island that the Rouge took refuge on after retreating from the forces of Charlotte Lin Lin. The pathways to access the White White Sea from the White Sea are unique to each Sky Island, given the inconsistent nature of clouds. For example, to get to Skypea, you can pass through Heaven's Gate and take the Milky Road, but you won't be able to travel from Skypea to another island on the White White Sea, You'd assumedly need to go back down to the White Sea or even the Blue Sea and find another way up from there. So with that in mind, we take all of this, smush it into a ball, and that's the One Piece world. And somewhere amongst all of that is the legendary island of Raftel, where the One Piece itself is waiting to be claimed. It should also be noted that there is a whole other layer of One Piece that exists in outer space, and we've even seen life on one of the planet's many moons. But that's a video for another time. So that about does it for the basics of the One Piece world. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe, and comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101.